All right, so my name is Armand. Dream Interpretations, day six, day ten. My bad. Um, and I, I fired my cameraman because he's a bum. So I'm gonna hold the camera, and we're gonna talk about um, life. I'm gonna couple it actually. I'm gonna do life, and I'm gonna do uh, dreaming part two. So this one's gonna be a little bit longer. Um, life is a poem that uh, was written by my man's and them. Quote. Uh, who's another member of the Triangle? And um, it's funny, man. It's like you get a vision and you get an idea. Look at how slow you're walking, son. Move up, move up. I need you to jog with me. It's funny when you get a vision and like. I hope I'm not too close. If I'm too close, I'm apologizing in advance. Um, it's funny how when you get a vision, right? And you get you get kind of like an idea of what you want to do, and then people around you that you know and that you trust, and even complete strangers, they'll get ideas and help you further that 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 larger idea. You know what I'm saying? And uh, quote quote and I for a minute we was we was chopping it up, you know, just talking about different ideologies and theories, and you know, just opinions on stuff that we had, books that we read, um, you know, a, a real true case of iron sharpening iron, because that's my man, and. Um, one day I just asked him, I was like, yo, I need you to get on, um, I need you to spit some poetry because he does poetry. And I was like, I need you to get on um, the album for me. And um, I explained to him the concept of the album. And he was like, I got you, I got something. So, dude takes his iPhone, okay? I'm Team Blackberry all day. I'm not going to show you. Hold up. I'm Team Blackberry all day. I got the 9700. So, yeah, I'm Team Blackberry all day. But, homie took his iPhone and recorded that verse, which is bananas to me. It's going to, it's going to sidewalk. Dude, that verse was recorded on the iPhone. And he had already written it too. So it's like he had that idea. We were on the same page and we didn't even know it until the idea came to, you know, fruition, which is bananas. And not only did he do that, he set the tone for the rest of the album. And he didn't even know, he didn't hear none of the songs. He just heard a concept. And that's, I love him for that. That's my dude. And, you know, he came through in the clutch. Pause. And, um,. He just did his thing, man. So, like, you know, big shout out to my man, quote. So, which leads on to dreaming part two. And Pizzy, Pizzy is like my young boy. He He's uh, one of my young producers from Colorado or whatever. You know, if you've seen him, you know, if you see me, you see him most of the time, anytime I'm in Colorado. So, shout out to Pizzy, I9. Shout out Jay Carter. That's my boy. Um, and it's funny how it came about. I had the sample. Well, let me tell you how I met Pizzy, because the, the story of me meeting Pizzy is hilarious. Dude was like 14 when I first met him. And, you know, my boy, my little brother, I have like like little kid, like between the ages of 18 and 21, that I consider like my little brother, my little sister. And um, John John's one of my little brothers. So, John is like, I need you, I, I got a friend who makes beats. So, I go to his house. At the time, I was like 18, and dude was like 14, 15, something like that. They was in high school doing something. And he was actually coming home from football practice. I sit there, wait on this dude, take a shower, do all that stuff. And this is before Fruity Loops was popping. He he plays me all these beats on his Fruity Loops, and I'm like, this dude is only 14? Are you serious? Um, but there was nothing. That, there was a lot of potential. It was really rough. Pause. <laughs> and and um, I'm laughing at something totally different. Um, but dude, like, he had a lot of potential. So I told him, I, you know, I keep him around or whatever. And I kind of kept in touch with him for years. And, um, finally, we ended up meeting back up right around the time I was doing the album. So I'm like, send me some beats. And the beats that he sent wasn't really feeling a fit in the concept of the album, which is cool. And uh, basically, like, I sent him the sample, the sample of the record or whatever. I'm not going to tell you the sample. But I sent him the sample, and two hours later, he calls me back, like, check your email. 
and I downloaded it to my phone, right? It was late too. It was probably like one in the morning. I had to be at work. So I already had the verse written. I had written the verse, written the verse to another beat. And that's actually my favorite verse on the album, uh, besides Scared Me. Yeah, it's a uh, Dreaming Part Two. So dude sends me the beat at like one, two o'clock in the morning. You ever lie? And I call this dude screaming like a girl, like ah, sit back. And ah, I I, my voice is a little louder. But like, dude, man, destroyed the beat so quickly. It was such a quick turnaround, and we pretty much worked together to kind of um, get all the kinks out to us. Lately, I've been meditating. I just have this like thought I came out and living right until he said the price. What about this geese poop, yo? Look at this. Are you serious? I don't know if y'all can really see that. So yeah. Uh, yeah shout out to Tizzy. Uh, his album R.I.P. Blank of Music came out first, and I am on that on a track called Wait It Out. Uh, right around this time, he probably should be leaking that record too. So you know, make sure you check that out. Um, shout out to my man Jay Carter too. Jay Carter was on Beautiful Ashes. Um, I should do one for Beautiful Ashes. Cause I'm, uh, yeah, Beautiful Ashes is probably one of the best songs I've ever done. And it's because of Jay Carter. So, you know, Dreaming Part 2, uh, lyrically, really came from, you know, it, it's the turning point in the record where I realized that I am not who I was. Um, and that I could be more and I have the potential to be more as long as I think it and as long as I believe in it then that's the seed the initial seed to make it you know make it come come to pass so um, that that record is really important to me everything that I write on this album is like true to life so if you hear something probably happened to me or probably happened to somebody close that I know and I know it's like a rapper cliche but I'm serious about that it really did so uh, day 10 in the books dream interpretations I know this one was a little longer than normal and um, that's what it is man maybe maybe I'll let him go for the next one because we might hold on to that one so effect I'm out please